have you talked to non-vegans and wondered why are they not understanding what I'm saying? Why are you bringing up something that's not related to veganism? I'm just talking about Animal Factory. But why are they talking about nomads in Mongolia, for example? We sometimes don't feel like we're communicating with non-vegans. This is because they are using an argument called Sophism. Today I'm going to talk about what Sophism is and whether consciously or subconsciously how they are using this technique of argument. Sophism is an argument that's seemingly correct, but if you look at it, it's actually invalid. Talking to non-vegans, when you describing the animal rights, how we should not kill animals unnecessarily, they are clearly using these techniques. Because it seems right, but it is not right. Now the first form of Sophism is called premature generalization. Let's see, there's a non-vegan who's saying that all of the vegans I've met are misanthropists. Therefore, vegans hate people. Now, this is lacking a lot of data. Statistically speaking, there's an approach called inductive approach, which making a hypothesis out of the data that they gathered. However, just like I said, they're clearly talking about an anecdote. Thus, this makes this statement very invalid. Non-vegans are not the only victims of this fallacy perspective. Gathering information or data that are supportive of your idea only is called cherry picking in statistics. So cherry picking is dangerous. You only rely on your information, data that are relevant to support your idea. So if someone has an idea that vegans are misanthropists, they only gather information that support that idea. So they only look for people who are vegans and misanthropists. And obviously that will limit their perspective. That would make them very inflexible. And you can be inflexible like that too. You can be a victim of a cherry picking too. If you're vegan, for example, if you look for data that just supports that the plant-based diet is the healthiest diet on earth, always, always, always on the lookout, which we can be the victims of also, you will limit your flexibility in mind and open-mindedness. So we have to be aware of cherry picking, no matter if you're vegan or non-vegan also. But going back to what we were talking about, the lack of data and concluding that all vegans are misanthropists is a very problematic belief, as you can see. So what they could have said instead is to say, vegans might be is misanthropic. Vegans might like animals more than humans. So by using might language like that, that would sound a little bit more promising. Now the next sophism is going to be ignoratio elenchi, which literally translates to ignorance of proof. Let's look at this example. So let's say I am telling someone that we should stop eating animals because that would kill animals and that would hurt animals and we don't have to rely on the animals to survive. But the person I'm talking to, they might say, well, what about the nomads in Mongolia? They have only animals to eat. They cannot grow crops. So would you tell them to go vegan as well? And also, don't we have a bigger problem than just animal rights? You know, this argument seems a little relevant. We have people who cannot grow crops. We have people who cannot go vegan. And we might have bigger problems than this. But the problem is, I'm talking about you. I'm talking to the person, not the people in nomads in Mongolia. 
And I'm talking about animal rights right now, I'm not talking about other social issues. This ignoratio elenchi is used by people who are seemingly good at debating, but smart people can see through you if you use this one. And the philosopher Aristotle believed that this ignoratio elenchi, since it translates to ignorance of proof or ignorance of refutation, he argued that those people who use this technique, use this ignoratio elenchi, are people who don't know what refutation is, so they don't know how to argue. So it is really dumb, actually, to use this technique in an argument. So if you're using this, stop doing this. Now this next sophism is the most important thing here, because a lot of people, I think, non-vegans use this technique. So if you are vegan, you should be aware of this technique when they use it. It's called straw manning. I'm sure you heard of it. With straw manning, let's look at the example. So person A says, I don't want to exploit animals. And person B says, there are people who are making living, who are doing this animal factory job to keep the food on the table. So are you telling me that they should get fired and starve to death? You see a problem here. This person A just said they don't want to exploit animals. That's what they said, all they said. But the person B creating some extreme version of this person A and attacking the extreme version of person A. This is why the straw manning is like creating a extreme version of this person A, which is a straw man of the person A, and literally attacking this straw man, literally putting nails to the straw man. So this is very programmatic, but I think a lot of people use this technique when arguing vegans. One of those videos that I did about Hiroyuki, he does this straw manning all the time. So the person A sounds, feels a little guilty for saying like, I don't want to exploit animals. Yeah, you're right. There are people who are working and keeping the food on the table. You know, that sounds a little convincing, but they might change their mind. Okay, okay, exploiting animals is necessary. Sorry, you're not the extreme version. You're not the straw man. You're talking about exploiting animals. And we're not even talking about the people who are working for the animal factory. We can talk about that in a different topic. So those people who use straw manning, you gotta watch out. You want to stay on the topic. Even if they create the straw man version of you, just don't get discouraged. You're just expressing your opinion, just merely your opinion, just pure opinion. So don't get discouraged. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this sophism, the introductory to sophism is helpful for you. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one. Until next time.